everybody and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host Scott Ramp and that was uh, Josh Cook. Yeah he's uh, yeah. playing guitar this time around. Yeah so I figured I'd switch it up. Yeah totally. Yeah. So we got a guest here today. We got Alicia Crandell in the wing waiting for us to talk about driving and dementia. A workshop to determine how you have that conversation with your uh, aging parents aging grandparents, and more. So we'll talk a little bit about that later in the show. I have highlights from episode nine of Do They Just Drew, where uh, um, Rowan Lemus took on Tom Nielsen. We have uh, some art clips for you guys, which will be ending by tomorrow, so you guys will only get a chance to see some of these art clips from the Gallery of the Visual Arts, the the, uh, the Master of Fine Arts uh, exhibit. So these are basically exhibits where they throw up art to kind of show, this is like, this is for my master's degree in art. Anyways, let's talk about uh, some things that are happening um, in the weather. So kicking off, it's going to be warmer and warmer every week. We're going to be seeing some temperatures in the 60s, but on Thursday. Um, you have a high of 55 degrees, you low of 35 degrees, you're going to have a 20% chance of showers. Thursday is going to be mostly sunny with highs into the 62 degrees, and then those temperatures are going to slowly go down as we reach the weekend of rain and showers as spring is sprung and we are here and uh, weather is done. So let's talk about uh, some news things that are happening. Last night, um, there was a, an emergency on the river. Somebody s uh, called uh, emergency services to rescue someone from the river. But instead, uh, they couldn't find anybody who was in the river, so they thought it was a false report because they did pull someone else out of the river, which wasn't the person of intention. So that's kind of like what's going on there. So it was around 8 p.m., then at 8.30, they pulled someone from the river. I don't know. It may have been just some random guy who was just kind of hanging out by the river, and they just pulled him out. There's just a lot of people in the river. I don't know what was going on. It, 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 was, it was just like an emergency call. Someone called to be like, hey, someone's uh, trapped in the river. And, you know, they had a plane and they had infrared to see if the, they could find any person to see. And they haven't really found anyone. So it, they, they, they claim it was a false report. Weird. Even though they did pull someone else from the river, that wasn't the intention. So it, it's kind of weird like that. Yeah. And speaking of um, something weird that's been going on, uh, what started out as a land swap between Terry Payne and the library to build their new site has become a major donation. Terry Payne, who owns the current Missoula Public Library building in the entire block of land on which it sits on the 300 East Main Street downtown, has donated it to the city. In 2016, Payne was inducted into the Montana Business Hall of Fame when the Payne Family Native American Center on the University of Montana campus was largely financed by Payne. Um, he also donated it to the Payne Family library in the Missoula College building. Payne, the founder of Payne West Insurance and local philanthropist, gave the property to the city last Friday. This will not affect the bond, but will provide new opportunities for the city to develop. And here is a quick quote from Mayor John Engen, reflecting on it at the uh, Monday City Council meeting. Mr. Payne came to me with the notion in late January of this year. Um, as I told a reporter today, um, after I picked myself up off the floor, uh, we continued our conversation. Uh, some key staff uh, worked on the financial and legal arrangements to make that happen. Um, with regard to Mr. Best's question this evening, uh, uh, the timing was such that it wouldn't have affected the bond issue at all. Um, and once again, I'm grateful we'll begin a process here in relatively short order of talking about what it is we'd like to see. All right. So that was Mayor John Ingen talking about that. So what would you like to see on um, the new property where the new old library is going to be? Is it going to be another uh, gentrification unit complex building? Is it going to be a parking garage? Who knows? It's basically virgin territory at this point. More MCAT. Yep, more MCAT? Yeah. Even though we're going to be the new library, we just have MCAT adjacent from yeah. MCAT? MCAT 2. Nice. Well, <laughs> in state news, Bullock has been vocal in his opposition to of work requirements, uh, pointing to data showing most of those... Um, 
um, covered by a Medicaid expansion in Montana were already working and highlighting studies showing thousands were uh, would lose coverage under these provisions. So uh, Medicaid expansion covered uh, those earning up to 138 percent of the federal poverty level or 17,236 for an individual or 29,000 for a family of three. In addition uh, an, to added exemptions to the work requirements, the bill changed last week to ease reporting burden by allowing the state health department to use information it already has to determine if people are compliant or exempt. So the whole idea is um, they're not going to necessarily report you if you're not doing the uh, federal required work hours for Medicaid expansion. So that greatly reduces the number of people expected to lose coverage under the work provision from 59,000 to 4,000 people. So it's quite a big jump. And of course, this is part of the past in the federal level that has to do with protecting the Affordable Care Act, which the GOP has been trying to repeal, but failed because they were unable to replace it. Uh, of course, although you are not required to report hours to Montana, they will look into helping folks who are unable to work on a case-by-case -case scenario. So, um, so speaking of Affordable Care Act, um, in national news, uh, like I mentioned, Montana House of Reps passed this new work requirement that had 16 16,000 people in Arkansas um, basically lost Medicaid coverage because of this work requirement. Uh, three quarters of a million people would likely lose their food stamps later this year under the new proposal by the Trump administration. The goal is to encourage able-bodied adults to go to work and to get off the government aid, but opponents uh, predict people would go hungry instead if the rule goes into effect. Of course, the executive order was signed quietly to create work requirements for people re uh, receiving federal benefits such as food stamps and Medicaid. Now several states, including Kentucky, already require people with Medicaid to prove that they work, but so far the federal courts have blocked those efforts. The work requirements requires a minimum of 20 hours of work a week for uh, Medicaid coverage. So you have to work 20 hours a week regardless. So it's, they're trying to get able-bodied people to do work with that. Many states are passing their own bills adjacent to this work requirement to help kind of interpret how they can, um, you know, and kind of like this what Montana is, it's like kind of more of a leniency on having work requirements. So it's, a, it's kind of a mixed bag of how each state is kind of uh, dealing with this executive order that was passed. Yeah, yikes. So yeah. So look into that, and f you can find out more by going to npr.org. You can go to also go into Helena Independent rec uh, Report. Uh, but without further ado, I've kept uh, Alicia waiting long enough. Here is an art clip from the Gallery of the Visual Arts, and then when we come back, we're going to have Alicia Crandall from Missoula Aging Services. And I'll be gone. Alicia Crandall with the Missoula Agent Services, which uh, in their mission statement states that they promote the independence, dignity, and health of aging adults and those who care for them. <laughs> Boom, take that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're talking about driving to dementia. So let's talk about this. Uh, there's going to be a workshop and there's going to be kind of teaching more about this, uh, misconceptions and finding out more about this, about mm -hmm. an upcoming workshop that's sure. happening in May. So do you yeah. want to talk a little bit more about that? I would love to. So um, we have been surveying some of our community members that are caregivers of loved ones with dementia, and they've asked for a workshop on the topic of driving and dementia. 
So when someone is showing signs of dementia, this can be a really difficult conversation to have. Um, and there are some pros out there. For example, dementia-friendly Missoula, AARP Montana, and the Alzheimer's Association that offer some great um, tricks, offer some great trainings, and we're bringing all three of those entities together to come to Missoula to provide this workshop on May 14th. And there's no limit to how many people can show up. You want at least 100 people. Yes, that's yeah, right, 100, 100 people, people to show up for this. Absolutely. Uh, it's two and a half hours long. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a break in between from what I saw in the event, right? We've got, we've got some breaks scheduled in and um, complimentary refreshments and snacks. Um, we're doing the event at First Lutheran Church, which is um, across from Community Medical Center. We've got plenty of parking and plenty of space to accommodate a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, um, like you said, uh, you have uh, many entities working together. Uh, um, I've, I've already ARP, ARP, uh, dementia, dementia uh, friendly Missoula, Missoula, and and the Alzheimer's Association. Yep. And they're all teaming up to uh, kind of talk with this workshop. Yep. And who's going to be the one that's talking? Sure. So we have with the Alzheimer's Association, they are doing one of their. Um, evidence-based workshops that is primarily there to focus on assisting caregivers with this topic. And then we have AARP that's going to present on some of their caregiver resources, including um, their driver safety resources. Dementia Friendly Missoula, which is one of our local groups, is going to be putting together a panel of professionals and caregivers to answer questions it'll be a little more interactive yeah i feel strongly that this workshop will have something for everyone sitting out in the audience which is good because a lot of times when you have these kind of events it's always like do you sit and just listen the whole time yeah. but it's good that people are going to be able to ask questions and work with people yep. and be like i just don't know what to do what if my uh my mom or dad say this and i'm what how am i supposed to react to that like mm -hmm. and also a lot of times it, like taking care of your parents is also a big deal like caregivers and your children Absolutely. also do a big role in taking care of the parents as well it sure is um i'm i'm very excited too that we're going to have some scheduled breaks and some tabling opportunities so all of our presenters will be available to talk with people during and after and i i also want to mention that this workshop is um it's free. Support, it's free and it's provided to us by a grant for dementia education through Montana Geriatric Education yeah. Center. Um, so they have provided us with funds to bring this workshop to Missoula. And MCAT yep. is filming it. We applied for a media assistance grant and MCAT will be coming out to film. So if people miss the workshop and want to watch it later it will be made available later it's really easy to apply for the it in, sure in is it's, it's mostly just you fill it out and we're there i have never been um, turned down and it's a very easy process yeah. and I, I remember that i did a program with you guys not so long ago about uh you know uh wills and uh Estate yeah, estate planning. Estate planning. Uh -huh. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, that was a, a big, a great program. You can watch it on MCAT.org, but that's a great example of, you know, you bringing experts coming down here to yeah. talk more about this. Uh, and this particular topic is driving to dementia, which is a big deal because the older you get and then uh, your doctor says you can't drive anymore. It's like, yeah. it's like you're basically what is giving you independence for so long has been taken away from you. Absolutely. And for some families, this is an easy topic and for others that's really really it challenging really and our presenters will also talk about how do you go about um, going to the doctor to get a diagnosis mm -hmm. um, what are the programs out there that offer some driver safety tips um, for dealing with dementia because there is a they actually AARP has a we need to talk program uh, for caregivers so yeah. we're very excited and it's it's very interesting to really think about because a lot of grandparents uh, do a lot of uh, help with the kids too as well like their grandkids like i know my, my dad he, he picks up my uh, niece now and again from preschool and all that stuff you know and he's in his 70s not to mention he has a history of dementia in his family so who, who knows if we're gonna ever have this topic so it's definitely hits at home for sure that is know. a great point we want to make sure that our drivers are safe our family members are safe that people in the parking lots are safe yeah y'all yeah. 
Cool. So is there anything else you want to mention, like uh, just for the topic, if you mm -hmm. want people want more information? Yeah, so um, we do ask that people pre-register and people can register by calling Missoula Aging Services at 728-7682 or get on our Eventbrite page, which Scott is bringing up right now. It's missoulaagingservices.eventbrite.com. Dot com. Yep, look at all these uh, events that are going there in New Medicare, Social Security Workshop. But we're going to be talking about the uh, uh, the event that's happening Tuesday, May 14th at 9.30 a.m. Um, it's going to be the Conversations on Driving and Dementia. And if you click on that link, it'll bring you to this page. And it's no cost. It's just a RSVP kind of registration that uh, you're just asking people to do just to kind of keep track of who's going to be there. That's correct. Yeah. So it's, you know, like, and I always think that it's always important to have more people involved in these kind of things, because the more people we have involved, the better chance of this happening again in the future. Yes, absolutely. All right, is there anything else you want to say? That's it. Thank awesome. you, Scott. All right, so we'll be right back. Um, I'm going to get a prompt of video for you guys, and we'll be right back right after this thing. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to another Thanks. episode of Dude I Just Drew with special guest Tom. Yes. And now it's time to <laughs> so now it's time to begin. What? Tom Nielsen. I E. Okay. Tom Nielsen. Yeah. Full name. Is there anything else? Am I missing anything? Is that it? All right. Cool. <laughs> I mean, you're only the host of the show. Oh, the host. It's been nine episodes. It's been nine episodes, but I can't nail it down yet. <laughs> All right, anyways, uh, let's draw. Made the best artist win. An anti-vax mother's final form. Can we make fun of them? Can we make fun of anti-vaxxers okay. on air? Okay. okay. <laughs> They're not a religious group. <laughs> <laughs> They're not a religious group. Uh, don't draw the hands behind the back. That's a cheap excuse to not draw hands. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's like the most unique thing I've, uh, I've heard. I, I was yes. going to say, like, maybe her immune system became so strong. <laughs> <laughs> her immune system went through the whole thing. The government the is hiding from me. Yeah. That actually kind of makes it look like a streak of color. Yeah. It's kind of neat. That's pretty cool. All right. Danny that's DeVito thing. blessing John Mulaney. <gasps> oh, John Mulaney. John Mulaney. That's, what the, is John that's the Spider Ham guy, right? Yeah. Okay, good. I know who he is. There's no way George Costanza or Danny DeVito. Which has been in more shows. Which one has been more, more media? I don't know. If you think okay. this episode is so epic, let's see how many likes we can get. That's a thing. To be an artist, you got to have art supplies and pain. <laughs> Just look at Van Gogh. Van Gogh cut his own ear off. For, and he made some great stuff. I can tell you that. I mean, you gotta like wait a few years after you're dead, but <laughs> yeah, eventually yeah, people will pick you up. A banana riding a turkey on, on a half pipe. Stick out of me? Yeah. Wanna fight? Yeah, okay. come over here. Scott, can I go fight Tom? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. You know, like, I draw. What I do. I draw. Is what I do. <laughs> there we go. Oh shoot! Plain court two. Plain, plain prison. <gasps> no, that's a that's it's a plain policeman it's saying, his, "I got gotcha. you." This is more than plain lawyer. <laughs> You're gonna stay in here for a long time. Plain what? Plain warden. <laughs> Okay, Tom. Want me to go to your level? Fine. Oh. <laughs> Fine. If only. I'll go full throttle. If only I had a challenge. <laughs> you have the ability to call back to previous episodes too. I have to. I have. I've only seen two of them. <laughs> I have to. I have to blame is the uh, big one. Is the big one? Is uh, he's the one that was convicted and Alcatraz like burst through the door. <laughs> going to Alcatraz. No! No! Let go of me! <laughs> A chair from an alternative universe. I mean, if it's from an alternate universe, I can draw literally whatever I want. You could, and you can't disqualify yeah, No, it doesn't even have to be vaguely cherish. You know, just alternate universe. Upon your audience, yeah. all be I mean, on. I should make it chair-like. 
But I'm not limited to that. Chair. Chair. Oh, 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 spider. Chair. <laughs> sit on me. Sit on me. Spider chair. Peter, sit on me. Sit on me! <laughs> and he talks to Mary Jane and he's like, I don't know if I'm ready to have Mary Jane uh, stack it on me. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm ready to have food. He's like, I'm just not sure I'm ready for Ottomans. <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. Ottoman. Oh, man. <laughs> Yo, is that extra? patio Parker? The patio chair? <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Yo, that chair just stole that guy's pizza. Okay, intense rounds because both artists intensify each, each other's artwork. Every That's single what I, piece was the best. Yeah. I had to go with my gut on the Some good stuff right there. Um, but, sadly, time to end for another episode. But hey, Slim Jimmy, uh, ones instead of eyes, two underscores. Yes. In between. And check out me, Nowhere2999, because I do art too. Uh, <laughs> um. Man, I don't know what else to say. But yeah, that's it. Thank, thanks for everyone. Thanks for being on. And uh, bye. See you later on the next episode. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, that was a uh, uh, highlight of episode 9 of Dude I Just Drew, featuring Tom Nielsen and Rowan Lemus. Um, you guys have to watch the whole episode to find out who won between those two challengers, but it was a really fun, really fun, especially when we get to the uh, topic of the interdimensional chair. Yeah, I won that hand-to-hand -hand combat, by the way. <laughs> I totally won that. <laughs> I didn't know you could explode like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to talk about some city council stuff. I, I kept it pretty short, um, um, and I moved some things around a little bit as we go along, so it's kind of uh, uneven. But we're going to start. Uh, oh wait, we're gonna, uh, basically we're going to start off with um, what's happening um, with some public comment and the library news. Per you know, of course, the new purchase of the library land. Uh, somebody, uh, Russ Bess, says the library doesn't benefit from the land donation to the city, and this is what he had to say. Um, about that. Exactly that if members of, the, members of the general public had known about this possibility when there was discussion and voting on the bond issue, there has also been MRA funding, there's been extensive fundraising. So I'm just encouraging the city administration I will encourage the library and Public Library Foundation administration to be open uh, about what they knew and when they knew it and whether they shared that information with the general public. Because uh, if the public had been aware of the possibility, there is the possibility that there could have been discussion about different approaches that the public library might have taken that might have benefited the public library more. All right, so that's, you know, he just, uh, he, he thinks that it's a little, uh, uh, he, th this could have been done a lot sooner, but then at the same time, it's like, uh, you know, it's like the whole concept of no good deed goes unpunished. It's like, yeah. he just like, he, I, I think the guy, Terry Payne, is just like, you, you can have the library, because he's like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this little property. Am I gonna tear down the old library? So he's just like, here, let's give it to the city. So, 
that's kind of what he I, did. I think it's a good, yeah. good gesture. Yeah, it was a great gesture. Um, yeah. But, you know, some people were just not happy about how he gave it. Anyways, but that's kind of like what's happening with some public comment. Uh, so far, the donation to the city of the library is funded through the county, which basically means the city will benefit from this particular donation rather than the library, which is county funded and through the county bond. So free it, stuff is free stuff. Yep, free stuff is free stuff. Uh, free stuff. Carrie Britton. Uh, who claims, uh, who says she's a new taxpayer in her public comment, has problems with public urination near her business, which is also near the Pavarella Center. So this is uh, one of many issues that uh, she, along with other businesses in that area, have been dealing with. It's, it's a very difficult thing. You know, some of our employees will go out and help, you know, a gentleman, or, you know, there's a gentleman that goes by regularly, help him through that ramp just because he gets his wheels get caught, you know, it's those turning wheels. So, and I know what the bumps are for, they're for the, uh, the visually impaired, but it could be bumps on the peripheral and then maybe smoother on the inside. So anyways, that was just an observation and something that we kind of deal with and I think, you know, wheelchair bound people would appreciate maybe another design. So with the um, Barbarello Center itself, a permanent bathroom like the one down the street here, or which way ever way it is that way, um, would be a really nice thing, I think, for the people that can't get into the PAV because of certain circumstances that they may have brought on upon themselves. But they're urinating against Montana glass. They're urinating against our building. They're defecating on the property. And maybe if they had a bathroom they could use, you know, like, you know, one down the street on a regular basis, it would eliminate that problem. All right, so that was what she had to say about that. But also, I forgot to mention that she was talking about um, ADA compliance and how it it doesn't help uh, some people who are wheelchair bound in that particular area. So anyways, uh, so far the police have uh, nothing to go on when catching certain individuals because a lot of times the individuals have to be caught in the act um, rather, than, uh, being co rather than it being complaint driven. Uh, so there's a lot of kind of like, there's not much they c the police can do about this. Yeah. Yep. So Hannah Higgins, outreach coordinator for the POV, talks about the homeless camps and how you guys can get involved with uh, many organizations that will do the big cleanup by uh, the end of April. The homeless outreach team goes out to the Preserve Street camps every week to provide assistance and support to those who are living unsheltered there. Our coordinated outreach team has worked together to be targeting different areas of the city as well as Reserve Street to talk to these folks about housing options and we have been able to be more efficient with referrals and housing referrals uh, due to this coordination. Um, every conversation that we have with folks is centered around housing and safety and building trust so we can get folks into services and refer to appropriate, appropriate agencies for housing. In conjunction with our coordinated outreach partners, we have housed three people from that area in the last four months alone. We are currently working with several others for procurement of stable housing. Um, we have good relationships with the folks that live down there and we want to keep that trust. An important part of that trust is the knowledge that we keep their interim homes safe and while we talk about permanent, while we are talking about permits, permanent housing solutions. All right, so um, that was Hannah. And uh, more on this topic, uh, they don't want to kick people out of uh, these uh, encampments that happen near the Higgins Bridge. They want to have a rapport with the folks there as well. But they're going to have to move a lot of the encampments as the spring runoff comes into f uh, fruition. Uh, hey, the river gets higher, and a lot of the um, encampment sites get all pushed aside. If you remember last year's flood, the encampment was basically kind of already flooded uh, lower down the Clark Fork River um, near uh, the water treatment plant. I noticed that there, like, uh, there's like an encampment like on a, a lonely island as it was surrounded by the runoff, uh, the flooding of the Orchard Homes area as well, excuse me. Um, so. Union Gospel Mission has been working um, for the last couple weeks every single Saturday going down there to clean up a lot of the area as well. Um, and they've been working with cleanup for a couple years in general, but of course now visiting Saturdays to clean up these sites. If you want to get involved, you can go to Union Gospel Mission. Here's April from the group, and this is uh, she's just talking a little bit more about th the church and their services in the community. I really appreciate being a part of the coordinated entry team and a part of what the city is doing to help those who are chronically homeless. And um, we were able to change a lot of our efforts as, at UGM as far as the outreach department 
to really fill the gap. So 549 Hope is the number that we have, and we have several churches who have partnered with us to where the benevolence, where they would go to the church and use that church benevolence. Now it's coming to where we are able to use it to fill the huge gaps in the city, that preventing people from being homeless. Um, we were able to prevent about 65 people from being homeless in 10 months and diverting people as well. So our hearts is to go out, not only serve the clients that we serve, but serve the city. And I just wanted to put out what our efforts are as far as our search and rescue team is we are cleaning up every Saturday. And then on May 4th, up until then, everything will be taken out and the church will pay for all of those. Um, all right. So uh, that's kind of what many of the efforts that the community is putting forward. If you wish to be part of the community, uh, join us uh, at Karis Park on April 20th to clean up the river. You can enjoy free barbecue lunch and enter a free raffle to win great prizes. Cleanup is from 10 a.m. to about noon, followed by a free barbecue lunch at Karis Park. Volunteers can uh, start checking in at around 9.30 and the day ends around 1. It's a drop-in so you don't need the RSVP online. But if you want to learn more information, you can always go to, uh, um, I think it's the Clark Fork River Coalition for more information about this. So, All right, so again, that f uh, it's 549-HOPE if you want to get in, uh, in, in touch with the Union Gospel Mission and do some more stuff like that. But we're going to switch gears because uh, Nicole Martin from uh, Big, S uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters talks about the uh, budget so shortfall that has been affecting a lot of these uh, programs that help kids. We've reached a critical budget shortfall due to unexpected changes in funding. Over the last two years, our annual state, federal, and private grants were cut by 120,000. We have done everything in our power to deal with the loss of a third of our annual budget, including reducing staff, but we are still coming up short and asking the Missoula community for your support. Our goal is to raise one year's operating budget expenses to help us develop and adapt a new funding model. We are currently serving over 100 active matches who would lose their impactful mentor relationships without our program. We believe in Big Brothers Big Sisters, our mission, and the long-term community impact of the program. All right, so um, once again, that was um, Nicole Martin. And she's talking about uh, certain budget falls. And if you wish to donate or uh, to also mentor, uh, there's they serve over 1,500 kids in the Missoula community, and they're always looking for mentors. You know, men who are, want to be big brothers. They have. They're always looking for more men to uh, do more mentors. You have to be 18 and o over, and it requires basically once a week you meet up with your little brother, and you hang out with him. What you do is up to you. Um, and you can find out more information about this by going to BBBS. Dot org. So Big Brothers Big Sisters dot org. So, yeah. yep. And that wraps up all your city council needs. If you're interested in learning more, more about the city of Missoula and what's going on with your community, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful uh, resource for permits, uh, information, and um, even joining committees along that way as well. All right. As I usually do a dub and stuff on these parts of days, I'm switching gears and I'm doing um, part of the Spring Flicks. All the work that uh, a bunch of kids did last week during spring break, uh, we did a spring flicks, spring break media camp, and one of the um, videos is, uh, okay, I can't tell you the title of this film, but it's one of the movies from Spring Flicks, and without further ado, here is this movie, and then when we come back, Josh is going to play us a lovely melody. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> here it is. Slides, but there's a damn body. 
Sorry I'm late. I was just transferred from the wildlife department, and we have to wake up with the sun. And as you can see, it's winter, so it's anyone's mm -hmm. guess when that comes up. Don't let it happen again. Did you find any fingerprints? No. Where's the body found? In the slide. Hmm. Why are the kids still here? Kids are like kids, by which I mean goats. You, they eat everything? <laughs> no. They have to play. Here's the body. They found him by sliding down the slide. Poor kid. Poor fella never knew what hit him. Do you know what the murder weapon is? We think it was a gun. Do we know if the make, model, or caliber? I'm pretty sure it shot bullets. Or am I pronouncing that right? Bullets? No, it's bullets. I'm pretty sure it's bullets. Maybe we should go find some clues. We already have some. I'll show them to you. We found fingerprints all over the area. Now look at this. They left the number two. What does this mean? Maybe it means this is their second victim. Let's go interrogate some suspects. You already have suspects? Why am I even here? Let's roll. Hello, son. You're not my dad. It's the figure of speech. Oh, uh, okay. What's a figure of speech? We're gonna have you come with us from the MCPD. Uh. Why am I? Ah! Why did you do it? Where's the weapon? Why? 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 Ah! Kill the man! Why did you, you kill the man? You want the money that he had? <laughs> maybe that wasn't the best interrogation. Yeah, maybe. Oh, what was that? Hey, the autopsy just came back. The word tree and justice were carved into his chest with a, a stick. A stick? Yeah, a stick. This is very odd. Now why would justice be carved into his chest? Most likely a revenge kill. Yeah, I'm gonna need a background check on the recent murder victim. Uh, any felonies or misdemeanors he's committed? Okay, great. So it turns out that the victim was charged with littering a month ago. Hmm, interesting. Who would arrest someone for littering? Good cops, that's who. I guess... Well, I got some big work to do. Hmm. Littering. I was just transferred from the wildlife department. department. Most, likely Most likely a revenge, a revenge kill. kill. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is their second victim. Could it be? I have to check this out. No. It, it couldn't be. Hey, I got my paperwork done. If you want to call it a day, we can grab some food. I found a really good vegetarian place down the road. Um, no, I can't right now. I think I am on to something. You ever heard of Nature Guy? Nature Guy? The guy who went missing for 10 years and he killed five people? 
Yeah. I think he murdered our victim. Our victim had littered and he had justice curved into his chest. With a stick. Exactly. That points to nature guy. How long did you work at the Forest Service again? Ten years. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, no, that's not me. This is me. Hey, 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 how's everyone doing? Everyone doing good? Good? Okay, cool. All right, so um, I want to tell you about uh, some things that are happening here at MCAT. Um, MCAT's hours have officially changed here. Uh, we're going to be open, our public hours are Tuesday through Friday, 11 to 5 instead of 11 to 7. So uh, it's going to be just an adjustment. So uh, yesterday was the first day that we closed at 5. Um, and I just, you know, what I did, I just made a couple of calls to a couple of the producers who took the cameras out and be like, hey, we have new hours, so just bring it back tomorrow. Yeah. You know, I'll let it slide this time. But anyways, they uh, check out equipment, and you too can check out equipment from Missoula Community Media Resource by uh, looking up more information at MCAT.org. Our location is 500 North Higgins Suite 105. It's off the Spruce Street entrance, um, just across from Missoula Textile Services. We have MCAT tours available for any uh, groups, um, civic groups, nonprofits, and more who just want to check out what MCAT's all about. We do a lot of great kids programs, but if you're an adult uh, looking to get involved with media and stuff like that. We have orientation every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. This time, if you want to do any orientation, you have to RSVP by going to MCAT.org and, call or, and or calling us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. All right, so that's kind of the here, here nor there. Um, let's talk about some events that are happening within the city of Missoula. It's time for Missoula events. Uh, starting this morning is the got developmental and preschool screening clinic. This is going to be at the Superior Gym, uh, Elementary Gym in Clinton. It's a free uh, development and preschool screening for children ages uh, birth to five years of age, and it will be held at the Wednesday, and this will be running from about now until about 11 a.m. in Superior Elementary Gym. You can call to schedule, which is 822-3600, extension 200. Uh, it's a free screening, which includes uh, gross motor, fine motor, language concepts, communication concepts, communication skills, hearing, and vision screening. So it's kind of like a uh, doctor's appointment for free. And that's what they're going to be doing at the Superior Gym, and I believe that is in Clinton, Clinton Montana. Cool. Um, toddler time at the Flying Squirrel. Flying Squirrel is doing uh, their own little, uh, well, that's... Uh, Sorry, I don't know. I, I, I got to stop saying, oh, they're all little. That's cute. That's so little. Yeah. Anyways, Fine Squirrel is doing another thing, kind of like what Roots Acro Sports Center does, Musical Gymnastics, and they're doing like a toddler time for young kids who just want to jump around and play. It's $11 per hour, and it happens Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to about 1 p.m., so it's toddler time at Flying Squirrel. Uh, one of many uh, indoor activity funds. As the weather gets warmer outside, a lot of indoor fun gets less and less uh, active, so... Yeah, but those are just some of the uh, solutions you have in case it's a rainy day. Hands-on science, uh, coding and circuits. You want to do some codes, you want to do some robots and that kind of stuff, build your own circuits and draw code for the Ozobots on the Discovery Bench today. They're basically little round robots, and you draw a line and they follow the line. It's pretty cool. Um, and, you know, it's 350 for uh, anyone four and over, and if you're under three, you get in free. Spectrum Discovery Center is going to be our partner in the new library. So just want to give them some more props for all that they do. Got to get that Scrabble and Bridge. 
a Scrabble and Bridge Missoula Senior Center every uh, pretty much every day <laughs> around uh, lunchtime, 12:30-ish, and you can have some Scrabble and Bridge. You can play, or you can just do some uh, bu do some break dancing moves on the best dance floor in Missoula. Yep. Middle school writers, if you want to improve your writing skills and you're in middle school, because the middle school is the, the, the ripe age to determine how good you are with, in terms of grammar, writing, vocabulary, and all that stuff. And if you just want to improve that kind of stuff, Miserable Public Library has it every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. Potluck, there's the uh, Health and Songbird Populations. Swan River uh, Community Hall, this is uh, Riparian. Uh, so these are all birds, and this is a, they're doing an April Community Potluck Dinner, which will be held uh, tonight at 6 p.m. at the Swan Valley Community Hall in Condon. You can uh, get great food and a presentation on the uh, health of songbirds population by Michael uh, Krizwicki uh, in out of the University of Montana Bird Ecology Lab. So learn a, bit, a little bit about that. But if you want to learn about wildfires, Keto House at the uh, Bonner location uh, is doing a four presentations through April into early May about how residents can prepare for the wildfires. First preparation is, is, is happening today, and it happens at 6 p.m. tonight. If you can't make the presentation, there are three other opportunities coming up, and I'll tell you more about that as we go later on into the month. Socrates Cafe. You like arguing? You like philosophy? Mr. Bubba Public Library has a Socrates Cafe from 6 to about 8 p.m. It's going to be in the boardroom at the Missoula Public Library. And that's usually the boardroom just right, just as you're going off the uh, the main street. What day is that now? Huh? What day is that? Socrates Cafe. These are all Wednesday events that are happening today. Oh, okay. Yep. And of course, you know, Missoula Public Library does a 3D printing workshop pretty much every two weeks. And it's going to be at 6.30 p.m. tonight at the Missoula Public Library. The secret ingredient in international development, Missoula does, uh, uh, Gallagher Business Building does global he public health series. And every Wednesday at around 6.30 p.m. in the Gallagher Business Building room 123, they do uh, many different talks from many people who have experienced, um, you know, through the Peace Corps, through um, um, anthropology kind of development, you know, doc, um, Doctors Without Borders, all sorts of activities that, um, are not really activities, but causes that get people to learn more about other cultures and how they deal with clean water and how they deal with other diseases there and also even like birth rates. So this time they're having Chris uh, Siegler, uh, who is an MPA. Uh, he began his international work in the Peace Corps in uh, Sri Lanka in 1963. Um, 19, uh, 1967, um, in 2004, he and his wife helped uh, develop a partnership between Missoula YMCA and the YMCA of Sri Lanka, oh, Sh Sierra Leone, sorry about that, which focuses on youth empowerment and vocal, uh, vocational training. He also works in Africa and India with microfinancing for women's group in developing a sustainable commercial agribusiness in uh, Sh Sh Sierra Leone. So. There you go. Whew, that was uh, that was brutal, but that's pretty much it for your Wednesday events. Um, I'm going to skip ahead and uh, go here. Th uh, I might as well show you. Oh, did I show you the, all, all the art clips? Um, I haven't showed all the art clips because I have one. Yep, I have to show you this one because this is the last chance I'll be able to show it because I won't have any more art clips until maybe uh, by Friday we'll have some new art clips. So this is the last chance you get to see some art from the gallery of the visual arts. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about the rest of the events and wrap up the show pretty quickly. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about the rest of the events that are happening for Thursday. Tiny Tales happens at the Mizzou Public Library every Thursday at 10.30 a.m. They have a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday deal, but this is a unique program held every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday at 10.30 a.m. Babies ages birth to three years of age are invited to attend, and they must be accompanied by an adult lap. Uh, participants will sing song, learn finger plays, and nursery rhymes, and hear stories. Hands-on science, uh, Spectrum Discovery Center starting at 11 a.m. when they open, x-rays and cat scans, and that's going to be happening at Spectrum. Yep! Bookmaking, Zootown Arts Community Center is doing uh, bookmaking uh, techniques, bookbinding techniques, and creating their own very own artist book. They also explore how contemporary artists use books in their practice and discover the, uh, the worlds of literature and visual art meet in handcrafted books. So make your own book. It is a $95 class and it happens Thursday from March until April and it's uh, $85 for members. Every Thursday Lego Club at Missoula Public Library again after school at 3.30 p.m. Beginning Beginners Internet uh, oh geez Beginning, beginners, uh, beginner to intermediate French 10 week course, kicking it off at the Lifelong Learning Center. They have also have a Spanish class happening um, on uh, around the same time, but this is starting at 4 p.m. from 4 to 6 p.m. This is a 10-day, every Thursday session um, and to learn French. Why not? They can, they can, uh, the uh, Lifelong Learning Center is a great opportunity for people who are post-education, you know, post-graduates and all that stuff, who just want to pick up some new skills, like in my classes. And you get certified, too, which is awesome. MCPS Elementary Attendance Boundary Advisory Meeting. This is a big deal because where your kids are going to go for uh, elementary school, this will help you uh, determine which is the best course of action depending upon who moves into where, the development of new uh, properties, more kids, more attendance. The advisory committee will meet at the business building Thursday, April 4th, 2019 at 6 p.m. to finalize the study and be ready to present their findings to the Board of Trustees on a following Tuesday meeting. The committee uh, would like to invite parents and community members who have uh, vested interest in the MCPS uh, elementary attendance boundaries. And I believe this is off of, um, I think it's Johnson Elementary or it's the one that's off of uh, South Street. It's that one building that's usually where they have the administration. It's one of the older schools in the district that they use for, um, that I think that's where they had the uh, Franklin School Kids while they built the building. So you can find out more information by going to mcpsmt.org. Kids write the darndest things. Downtown Dance Collective is doing an improv uh, theater written by kids themselves. So, uh, Teresa Waldorf, Summer Theater Day, day Camp, uh, Rosie Ayers, and uh, um, Marie Williams, Jen Meyer, a bunch of other names, um, will act out plays and short, silly, smart stories written by children exactly as written for the fun and funny evening of laughter and passing the hat. It's $20 at the door or whatever you can afford to give. The fundraiser is a benefit uh, theater camper, uh, Tesla Iyer, who has been diagnosed with leukemia and could use the love and support of the Missoula Arts community. And that's at 7 p.m. tomorrow night at the Downtown Dance Collective. And if you're interested in comedy um, and some things to laugh about, uh, they have comedy at the Union Club starting at 9 p.m. It's every first Thursday of the month. It is uh, their comedy night at Union Hall. Yeah. Do they have like set acts? No, it's open mic comedy, but it's geared towards comedy. So, like, you know how, like, open mics are kind of like, do whatever you want, and it's usually just, just bands and whatever. This one's more geared towards comedy, so there's that expectation of you trying to make people laugh and you going there to laugh as well, whether a person is funny or it's funny that they're not funny. You know, it's yeah. just, you know, just how it is. You know, that's what it's open mic comedy is. It is a win-win situation regardless. So Union Hall every first Thursday of the month, and it's the first Thursday of the month tomorrow night. And uh, that's pretty much for your events. And I think, yeah, we have a little bit of time left. Do you want to do, you wanna do anything? Do you want to say anything? Do you want to talk um, about anything? I'm thinking about doing the uh, open mic comedy, um, but I'm not sure what to talk about yet. Okay. Uh, any ideas? Any thoughts? I don't know. Uh, I think they only have you up there for like five minutes. Like five minutes or so? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Should I go with like a classic anecdote? You could. You know, something like... Uh, do you want to Do you wanna tell like one long story or do you want to uh, have five one-minute stories? Like I was thinking about like just like recapping um, like how I've never had like a serious injury in my life, um, but I've had like a bunch of small, really weird injuries in my life, like um, roller skating with a jump rope, sprained my wrist, uh, got tossed a lightsaber, broke a tooth in half, 
Um, you know, just like really non-conventional uh, injuries. There was something else. What What am I thinking of? Uh, oh, crashed a go kart um, that didn't have any brakes, and all of them were. Um, yeah, all of those involved my f uh, best friend growing up, hmm. and I just realized that. Like, uh, he was holding the jump rope while I was rollerblading. Uh, he tossed me the lightsaber that broke my tooth, and he convinced me to take the go-kart down a hill without the brakes. So, hmm. so basically, I... I, I that's uh, like, that's like three interconnected stories, but the one constant is your friend. Yeah, yeah, I think that might make for some decent material. Yeah, honestly. it's a good story. Just uh, think about how you're going to approach it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll think about it has to be a reveal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like I like the reveal. It was definitely worth it up. when you had the reveal. But yeah, definitely have the slow build up. All right, so I think that's that's good. So if um, you know, uh, depending upon if you want to, if you're are you gonna do it this Thursday or are you gonna kind of wait? I well, if it's nine tomorrow, I think I'm free. So you know, I'm, I'm, I think I'll probably try it tomorrow. Awesome. I'll give it a shot. All right. Well, yeah, that so. about does it for uh, Wake Up Missoula. Um, do you want to play us out? Do you want to? Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's let play me, us out. Let me play a little tune. Um, this is a little tune that I learned in jazz band. And I drove my teacher crazy with it. It's called Tastes Like Chicken. And, uh, it's pretty funky. All right. Take it away, dude. <coughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.